This morning, I had the accidental pleasure of hearing Billy Joel's We Didn't Start the Fire, which originally aired in 1989. Now, for those of us old enough to be considered adult in 1989, it's a rapid-fire musical regurgitation of headlines, names, and conditions that were mostly meant to sell newspapers and instill anxiety. Everything's on that song from Marilyn Monroe's suicide to the Kennedy assassination. And not everything was fear-mongering, but all of the 119 headline references were designed to elicit some emotion. Walter Cronkite. Remember Walter? The most trusted man in America? Well, he'd retired eight years before this record was released. And the Federal Communications Commission's Fairness Doctrine, which had required public broadcast licensees to present controversial issues of public importance fairly and representing differing public opinions, had been abolished in 1987, just two years before this was released. By any poll I can find, trust in the U.S., and for that matter, international media since the mid-1980s, has spiraled into a bandwidth-delivered barrage of continual anxiety-producing content, since hardly a fact can be presented that isn't followed by how I'm supposed to process it. I believe Billy Joel could repen the lyrics to We Didn't Start the Fire today, with a whole new 119 or many more headlines we've been subjected to since 1989 that will spark emotional reaction. Take a deep breath. I'm reminded of the great one-liner from Oscar-winning Sir Mark Rylance's character, Rudolph Abel, in the Tom Hanks film, Bridge of Spies. Hanks' character, who's Rylance's defense attorney, asks him, If you're found guilty of those espionage charges, they'll hang you. Aren't you worried? To which the accused spy responds, Would it help? I ask if I worry about stolen elections, Putin, masks, critical race theory, gun violence, inflation, climate change, fossil fuel, yada, yada, yada. Does it help? I'm not suggesting that I not take in the data on what has happened. I'm suggesting that I don't make myself mentally unhealthy just to stand in line for the next installment. Would that help? I'm suggesting that developing high levels of anxiety around what could happen, based on these now unregulated presented subjects of public importance, adds little or nothing to the quality of my life, or yours, or the world in general. I can make a case that under many headings, I see it detracting from the quality of life and regularly polarizing populations with opposing anxieties. So what to do? Take a deep breath. I'm reminded of the commonly accepted version of the serenity prayer. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and finally, the wisdom to know the difference. I have no influence on the media barrage. I can change sources, but I find it increasingly clear they all have the same anxiety goal. I can change my response to each, though. I have that in my power. And that means I don't need to be subject to increased levels of anxiety simply because it's what's being marketed. It won't help. And therein lies the wisdom of knowing the difference. I no longer have Walter Cronkite or the FCC fair, Fairness Doctrine to defend against my potential anxiety. From here on, it's up to me. It's Kim, and this is another moment of clarity.